Raj and today I have chosen a very important topic of ecology called ecological niche. Some people also call it niche, some call it niche. Uh, however, I would prefer to call it niche. So, an ecological niche refers to the functional role of a species in a habitat. Now, what I mean by the role? The functional role refers to how it obtains its energy, nutrition, shelter, timing of activity, predation and how it interacts with other species and how it influences the environment. Now, I would also like to talk about the relationship between a habitat and a niche. And you know, to very simply put it, we can say the habitat can be called the address of the organism and niche can be called the profession or job of the organism. Now, if we look at a certain habitat, for example, this is a certain habitat. Now, several species can live in the same habitat, but they would all have a specific unique role. For example, ABC, they have specific unique roles. Now, if we take an example, let's say there is a tree and there are some insects that eat the roots. For example, white grub eats the roots. There are some insects which eat the leaves. For example, the serpentine leaf miners eat the leaves. So they have different roles even though the habitat is the same. Now uh, from this I would like to come to another important aspect that what are the advantages of having a niche. See uh, the niches are important in ecology because each species has its own unique adaptations so that they do not compete for the resources. They would have their own role and they would be busy with their own. So therefore they can easily coexist. You know, like if we talk about a forest, in a forest there are tall trees, short trees, shrubs, they have all different requirements of sunlight and nutrition, so they can easily coexist together. Now, the, uh, now a very important definition of niches was given by uh, a person called Hutchinson. He called niches n-dimensional hypervolume. I know it sounds like a bombastic word, I'll simplify it. n-dimensional means all the aspects or the dimensions of the environment like temperature, precipitation, competition, predation. I have tried to draw it on the board even though it is not possible to draw it because it's a two dimensional figure and this is called n dimensional hypervolume. Now hypervolume refers to a region that has more than three dimensions. So naturally I cannot draw it on the board. It's only a basic exercise, a mock exercise that I have done to explain it like sunlight, humidity, altitude, predation. Uh, requirements of phosphorus or nitrates but it's actually not possible to draw it so n-dimensional hypervolume so now let's come to uh, a very important concept called the competitive exclusion principle which was given by Gauss this says that no two species can occupy the same niche because there will be competition for resources and ultimately one of the species that, that is the weaker one would have to move away from that niche. So if you remember Darwin also talked about natural selection. So I will talk about natural selection in the context of which species gets to occupy which niche. So from here I will come to a very important concept called fundamental niches and realized niches. Fundamental niches refer to all the niches that an organism can theoretically occupy. Whereas realized niches refer to practically which niche an organism will get to occupy. Now I have uh, used an example of barnacles, two different species of barnacles like Chathalamus and Blanus. Now the functional niche of Chathalamus is from here to here and the functional niche of Blanus is from here to here. But this area is an area where the two fundamental niches are overlapping. So there will be competition here. So ultimately one of them have to move out. So and here the blanus has occupied this region. So this has become the realized niche of the blanus because it is somehow stronger. And the chathalmus has uh, remained only to this region. So this is the realized niche of chathalmus and this is the realized niche of uh, blanus. Now uh, the concept of niche also includes the concept of tolerance to various abiotic factors. For example, uh, I have drawn on the x-axis several variables like sunlight or temperature or humidity or nutrition. Remember I talked about the n-dimensional hypervolume 
n number of dimensions. So these can be either of them are possible. And here I have plotted population. So when the conditions are optimum, maximum population would be here. But as you move away to either of the sides, the conditions would become difficult. For example, the temperature is becoming high, so the species would not be able to survive. And when the conditions become intolerable, you will not find any species. Now there is also a concept called niche partitioning, which means that two species can occupy different niches so that they can easily survive. For example, there are birds called warblers. They occupy different parts of a tree, like the black burial warbler occupies this part, Cape May warbler occupies this part, and uh, the black throated uh, green warbler occupies this part. Now, since they are not occupying exactly the same niche, so they can coexist. A very good example also is like owls would hunt during the night and hawks would hunt during the day. So now this example can be called spatial niche partitioning which is about birds in a different tree because they are occupying different spaces and owls and hawks they are working at different times so this can be called temporal niche partitioning so this was about niches now to end it I would just like to add that just remember niche refers to the role or the function of a species in a habitat or you can simply say it is the job of the species in an ecosystem. So thank you for watching and please stay tuned for more videos. Thank you.